All right, and we are officially live. So welcome everybody to this week's edition of Meet the Staff Monday. And today, tonight, depending on uh, what side of the country you're coming from here, and I'm losing track of time, uh, <laughs> we're bringing on uh, a guest here, which is a staffer with Purit Bowling. Uh, so tonight, I want to uh, bring to you staffer Cassandra Mize. So Cassie, how are we doing today? Uh, you know, hanging in there. It's a little chilly here in Indiana where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah, it, Indiana, a little chilly, but uh, looks like you're in, uh, you know, a little bit of a man cave or I, I apologize if it's a woman cave down there. Uh, but when she first came on my feed, I said, you know, you and Terry have a bowling center. You know, obviously I knew uh, Cassie wasn't in town right now, but uh, um, Indiana is uh, what you called your hometown growing up, correct? Uh, Indiana is my home state. Yes, my hometown, Fort Wayne. Okay. Best city in Indiana, give or take a few other cities that are equally well liked, I guess. <laughs> right. So, where are you coming from, Asad? I mean, it's a, a unique backdrop there. It looks like it's probably uh, somebody's home. So, I'm I'm a little bit jealous. So, uh, tell us where you're at. Yeah. So, so one of my friends in Fort Wayne um, has so graciously allowed me to come to you live today. Uh, from his home, uh, Victory Lanes is what he calls them, uh, and it's a nice little area. He's got a nice bar in here. Obviously, you see the lanes, two little lane center A2s back there. Very nice center um, to have a lot of fun in, especially when we know that we have to have uh, smaller crowds, so there's nice to do some pot bowling individually. Right, right. It's a, uh, it, it, it's pretty incredible looking. Um, I have uh, lanes in my basement too. We're not going to go down there right now. Um, it's, it's a, it's a shortened version and uh, it's just the set I had as a kid. It's made out of plastic, but uh, uh, maybe one of my uh, dreams there, the first one was to uh, have a bowling center of my own. So we're getting there, right? You know, I got, I got eight lanes, but uh, not in my house, but uh, maybe someday. Anyway, we, you know, we brought you on the uh, program here and we, we love doing these meet the staff Mondays because you know, Individuals have probably heard your name, um, especially starting to learn it here on the East Coast with us now. Uh, but we like to be able to talk to the to the players and kind of allow them to give us a little background on who they are. You know what what got you into the sport and such. So, Cass, why don't we why don't we kind of go back? Obviously, you know, growing up in Indiana, what what got you into the sport? Where did this start at for you? Yeah, so it started with my family. Uh, we are big bowlers in Indiana and in Fort Wayne. My grandpa's side of the family always bowled. So when I was six, I think it was my mom's opportunity to have some downtime when I would be on the lanes bowling and she would be eating popcorn and reading her book uh, in the background. So I actually started bowling when I was six years old and uh, had a lot of really influential coaches in my life in the Fort Wayne area. We are very blessed to have, you know, some of the best coaching around. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I started shooting well for a female in the sport, especially in the age of uh, newer to uh, reactive bowling balls. It was coming up in the, uh, I guess, mid 90s. Mm -hmm. I shot my first 200 when I was 11. I was like, oh, this is fun. My dad then was a night manager at a local center. So the only way I could see my dad, we all know once we get sucked into bowling, that's where we're at all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way I could see my dad was to go to the center. And the only thing to do at the center when you don't have quarters to play in the arcade is to bowl. So started really um, getting better, getting a lot of time in on the lanes and then started bowling competitively when I was 15 and then went to college, uh, bowled at Purdue. And then after I graduated Purdue, unfortunately, the women's tour uh, was not a thing when I graduated college. So it was just going out into women's leagues, which when you come from a very competitive collegiate program, women's leagues, uh, unfortunately, sometimes leave something to be desired. And tur women's tournaments were not really a thing either. So I, I turned my focus to my career and uh, my coaching. So I coached at the Ohio State University for a couple years, then Toledo University. And then after I moved uh, to Indianapolis, just gave private lessons. And then finally, I find myself in uh, the Baltimore area. And that is how I got introduced to you. 
pretty pretty quick timeline of the journey there. I mean, it's you know, you know, and I think you're in that that kind of that age demographic for the females we talked to. That was, uh, you know, what you brought up was kind of a rough patch where, you know, the uh, back in the day, the the women's professional association had folded, and uh, there wasn't a professional ranks. And you know, now uh, with the return of it. Um, definitely has got to get the, uh, you know, the creative, uh, juices going again and, and really wanting to get that competitiveness back out onto the lanes. Um, but you know, let's go back, you know, even before we talk a little bit about that. So, I mean, you went to Purdue university, um, bold collegiately, um, talk to us about that experience. I mean, we have so many, you know, young girls and guys, if you will, that are, uh, you know, in the, the high school ranks now and, you know, kind of wonder sometimes about that, uh, that collegiate, uh, transition. So what was that like for you? Yeah. Uh, so bowling collegiately was one of the, um, the most rewarding experiences I ever had. And, uh, my, I remember my freshman year. So the, the women's national team or the women's team never made it out of nationals. They might've made it out of nationals one time prior to me coming in, uh, to Purdue. And my team was, uh, a bunch of local Indiana bowlers. We had grown up together, bowling on the competitive circuit together, and we meshed really well. We ended up making nationals our first year. I remember at sectionals when, uh, so sectionals is formatted the same way that it is today, where you bowl 64 games in a, 64 Baker games in a weekend. And I remember getting into the, uh, the last 16 games, someone in the back was talking to a parent and they're like, who's Purdue? Why is Purdue even in contention to make nationals? Cause we knocked some pretty good teams, uh, out of nationals contention that year. And we, so we made it to, to nationals, my freshman, sophomore, junior year, we took Wichita state to seven games, uh, very close right before semifinals. Unfortunately, we were not the victors, but, uh, thoroughly enjoyed that time. Unfortunately, my senior year, we had a, a transition of, um, talent and we were not able to, to make it my senior year, but the, uh, all of the, the people that I've met along the way, I'm still very good friends with uh, from my college teams. And I would not trade that experience for anything in the world. Right. And I think, you know, we had talked to, uh, you know, a couple other individuals about, you know, the transition and what to expect. So as a female uh, collegiate bowler, um, what is what is the biggest thing, in your opinion, that these young girls that are out there that have aspirations of, of bowling for collegiately, uh, what should they really be doing to prepare themselves for the differences of maybe, you know, high school bowling or something like that or competitive bowling around here and then getting into that kind of that team aspect? And, you know, what what are the biggest uh, maybe challenges or things that they should be focusing on, in your opinion? And obviously as a coach as well. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest things, uh, trans making that transition, a lot of times, uh, high school players and even myself, we're coming from more of an individualist background where we're bowling these tournaments individually, where, you know, even when you're on a high school team, if the team doesn't gel well together, you're still in it for you. The biggest thing transitioning to a collegiate program is really understanding that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you like the person you're bowling with on the lanes or don't like them and from a personal perspective, you're there to, to win a national title. And once you put all of that behind you and you bowl for the team, it's really um, all about the team at that point. Obviously, you still have some individual tournaments you, you bowl, but no matter if someone made you cry, you know, the night before because of a towel incident or whatever, I'm just throwing random things out there. Um, but maybe some truth to them. We don't know. Maybe some truth to them. You know, you, you still step on the lane the next day and, and the goal is to win a national title. And I think that is the biggest challenge uh, that a lot of women, men going into collegiate programs face is that it's not about you anymore. It's about the team. And then I think that transition also happens again when you go from collegiate bowling, because you will most likely never have another opportunity at that level to compete with, with a team in that, uh, in that respect. So then transitioning back to individual and going out and bowling individually, it is, is definitely a little bit of a roller coaster because you want to be there for somebody else. And then it's, then you're by yourself again, when you've had the ability to, to have a team behind you. So I think that is one of the biggest, um, 
uh, challenges moving from high school to, co to collegiate bowling. Uh, I think another aspect is, is the mental game, really understanding that you can only control what you can control, even in you know, tournament bowling today, if you score watch or you watch other players who might be hitting the lanes pretty well, you know, that's a, uh, you can't watch them. It's about you and what you can do in your game. And you're the only one that can affect your shots and give or take a lane play difference or so, but. Right. No, makes total sense. And I think, uh, you know, it, it's good that you hit upon that because we talk about this stuff all the time and it's essentially that, you know, control the things you can control. And uh, when everybody embraces that, whether you're at a high school level or going to go bowl college or, you know, you're past that point and you're looking to do something locally or even in league, it doesn't, you know, you can't ultimately, um, you can't change the outcome of what somebody else does, but you can control what you're going to do the next time you step on the lane. Um, <clears throat> so, it, you know, it's incredibly important to uh, embrace that aspect of it. But um, so, you know, you took that, you, you did some collegiate coaching then from my understanding. So how long were you at uh, Ohio State? And uh, I believe the other one you said was Toledo. Yeah, so I was I was at Ohio State for for a couple seasons. And then my career, like I said, when I, when I got out of uh, college, I couldn't just be a professional bowler, which I think is everybody's yeah. dream when you've been doing it. <laughs> yeah. um, so I decided to to focus on my career <clears throat> and, and coaching uh, for the most part. I mean, I, I still bowl tournaments, but I, I coached at the Ohio State for a couple years, then University of Toledo for three seasons. And then I, my job moved me again uh, to okay. Indianapolis. I didn't get involved in a program. I just did private coaching after that. Okay. So it had moved you down. I know you said about the Indianapolis area and then is it, then Indianapolis and then ended up in Baltimore that that was job as well, or yeah. that was okay. So, uh, yeah. you know, we, we don't, we don't want to dwell on what you do for a living for a long period of time, but you know, obviously I think it's a good thing to talk about because, um, you know, Cass, I know what you do for a living, but if you share a little bit about what you do and then, you know, it is a different challenge because now you're, you know, most players can relate to that because, uh, most players that want to bowl, you know, tournaments or maybe try their hand at, you know, whether it's the PWBA or the PBA, uh, they're balancing a work life. And then I, I don't want to say if it's a fun life or maybe a secondary career. So, uh, you know, what is it that you do and, and what are you trying to, to juggle back and forth? Yeah, it's so it's interesting. So I've changed functions, if you will, in my career. So I, I spent 10 years in sales and then the last two years have been in marketing. So all in the healthcare industry. I do want to put a quick plug in for bowling that I 100% believe that I would not be where I am today without bowling because it has taught me how to deal with different personalities. It's taught me how to uh, overcome challenges that I have either with people or on the lanes. It keeps me mentally engaged. So uh, without those things, I don't think I ever you know, would be where I am today. I started selling bowling balls when I was 16 years old at a local pro shop here in Fort Wayne. Uh, you know, shout out to Georgetown Bowl for allowing me to, to learn how to drill balls and how to sell bowling balls. And I remember out of college, my first interview question for this company called Abbott, it's a healthcare company. They asked me, they said, well, why do you think that you would be good in sales? And I, so I sold this guy a bowling ball when I was in my interview and, you know, I got the job. So mm -hmm. I, I then, so I spent 10 years in, in medical sales uh, both in hospital and in physician offices and had the opportunity to, to go to a medical device company and market one of the best molecular devices on the market. That's my, my plug for my device. Uh, so that's what I do now. So I'm a senior marketing manager for a medical device company for molecular bio microbiology. Yeah. If, if anybody doesn't understand what she said, it just means she's smart. So <laughs> she sells stuff to other smart people. So, you know, if we, <laughs> for us, uh, us feeble people here, you know, or these lonely pro shop guys here that, uh, you know, are just trying to make a buck, putting a couple holes in a ball here. It's, uh, but you know, all jokes aside, you know, obviously, you know, you're in a, you're in a, you know, a predicament now where, you know, you're in a medical field, which obviously is very much needed at this point and very much wrapped in with the, you know, what's going on in the world right now. Um, you know, and, and seeing, you know, what it's doing, 
you know, in your, your career and, and not there, but also what it could affect with uh, our game as well. You know, what we're here to talk about. So, uh, Jeff, is I think your internet froze. You are not oh, yeah, you are. I am. Hi, I'm I'm live. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I think Jeff's internet froze. I'm making this work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, are we still live? Yeah, yeah. Jeff. Hello, six o'clock for dinner, right? Yep. Okay, that's good. Um, Jeff, Frank, anybody? Can you guys hear me? And are we still live? Did his internet go off? Oh, Jeff is frozen, but I am okay. All right. I, so, I am back. I don't know what happened. Can you hear me? Now? <laughs> <laughs> that was the most random thing I've ever heard, have ever seen. Had. My whole thing just froze. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> so I'm back. So, uh, I don't know where you were leaving off on that. And if you could hear me rambling the whole time, you know, kind of probably bitching a little bit, like, you know, what the hell just happened. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there, yeah. Thank you everybody. Now I can see the comments coming through that. Uh, yes, my screen was definitely frozen and uh, dumped on me. So, uh, we'll blame it on my, my other half in here. Who's probably hogging the Wi-Fi, and I'm not on a hard line. So, uh, we'll go from there, but, uh, we were talking before I got cut off cast and I was, you know, was saying, you know, right now, you know, with the, you know, the outbreak of COVID and, and trying to balance that with uh, bowling and, and things along those lines. Um, I know right now you're in Indiana, you were planning on doing some bowling this weekend and share with me before the feed that looks like some of the stuff there is going to be canceled for the weekend, which is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little disheartening, but uh, totally understandable at that point. Yeah. So if we go back to, I think before you got cut off, how do you balance trying to get back into competitive bowling and still have yeah. a career? Is that where we were going before? We That's got where cut we off? were going. Um, so yes, it absolutely, um, is a challenge, especially, I, so for me personally, I work a lot. Um, so at the end of my day, well, let's say, I guess pre COVID at the end of my day, it's like, okay, so I'm going to go out and practice and I need to practice because, you know, we have a tournament coming up. I need to make sure that I'm as sharp as I can be. And it, it is very much a challenge to have that uh, drive to want to go and practice, knowing that that you should. Um, mm -hmm. Now that we're in a COVID world, I cannot wait to go practice after I get done with my days. It's kind of my outlet uh, mm -hmm. to, um, you know, just forget everything that's that's going on at, at work and you know whatever else stresses people out nowadays. So, absolutely. So, I mean. Uh, let's say that the COVID is gone. Okay. And, and we're moving forward for this and you're back home, you're back in Baltimore. Um, what, what are your bowling plans? I mean, what do you, what's the next step for you? I mean, obviously we talked about the collegiate ranks and kind of, uh, you know, now getting back into the swing of things, you know, what, what's on your horizon? What do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. So it's, it's a fantastic question. Actually, right before COVID, I just got a whole new arsenal drilled up by you and we changed some pitches. I was having some, um, I was having some issues in my hand really bad. I thought they were attributed to maybe early onset arthritis, which still probably is the case uh, for some of it. But we, we got a whole new arsenal drilled up. I went out one time. I threw, I, we had a prison warp, but uh, Omni, mm -hmm. and I loved them. And then that next week, COVID happened, and I didn't touch my bowling balls again for you know six months. So now trying to get back in and get back into the swing of things. Uh, I, you know, we drilled up that counter attack and the U motion, which I haven't had a lot of games in yet, right. but really, really looking forward to, you know, getting back on the lanes and, and getting sharp. So I can maybe go out and, and compete in some PWA PWBA events. I I've competed in a few of them. And while I actually only I guess one Queens event and a, and a few PWBA events up in, in Detroit did not do mm -hmm. as well as I would have liked. There is clearly a, um, a gap in my game right now to make sure that I can you know, see the lane the right way. And 
I'm hoping once COVID kind of calms down, I'll be able to, to get out and work with, with you and some of my other coaches on, on my game. Yeah. And it's, I think it's definitely on everybody's horizon there too. And I mean, the one good thing is, is, I mean, even through everything that's going on, um, you know, the PWBA is, is doing what they can, you know, essentially trying to schedule out, um, you know, some tournaments for, for the ladies and laying out what next season potentially could look like. Um, I know being so close to Shannon, she has her ticker going already. I think they're at like 56 days till the first event in Dallas. Um, you know, and I think it's, uh, you know, it, it's important because it still gives the the girls, um, you know, something to look forward to and something to work towards, you know, whether there's a, la- a delay to it or not. Um, I think it's what we need to extract, you know, especially with bowling and, you know, why we like doing these programs and stuff is we don't want to focus on all the negative stuff that's going on. We want to look at the positives. We want to, you know, continue to try to, to prepare, but, uh, you know, do you see yourself doing, you know, trying to, to do a bunch of the tournaments this upcoming season, or is this like a, uh, you know, maybe something you're looking at two years out? I mean, where, where's your head out now with, uh, taking that kind of that, that plunge to the next level, if you will. Yeah, so I'm probably still a season out. Uh, I do not foresee my uh, job, unfortunately, slowing down anytime soon. Uh, So even if I wanted to, it would be a challenge for me. I think they're still planning to have Queens in the May timeframe. Mm -hmm. Uh, That might be something that I would be interested in uh, trying to compete in. And then maybe the next season really focusing in on, on competing a little bit more. I have enough vacation time since that haven't been able to take any of it. With I was going to say, if you, if you take it, you did share with me that you're all technically on vacation this week. And uh, my first question to you was, well, how's that going? And you said, well, I work seven hours today, but yeah, good job. <laughs> you know, I, we're all guilty of it. You know, we can, we can say we're taking a day off, but uh, it doesn't really happen that way. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's great to look forward to. And, and by all means, yeah, Queens uh, is definitely on the schedule. Um, it was moved. It was flip flopped. Um, you know, for the guys looking forward to it, a bunch of us, um, it's pretty amazing there too. You know, you have to have things that you're, you're looking forward. They put up the, the, uh, the plan to have the masters in March and, uh, it sold out in like two days. <clears throat> so, but it gave us for all the competitive bowlers and kind of the juices and stuff and not being able to compete as much as we, uh, have wanted to, I think it's, it's really good. Cause it's a positive outlook on what we can work towards, um, for myself, you know, and I know we're talking about you, but it, it, it's bowling in general for myself. I signed up for the masters right away. Cause it was taken from me last year. Right. And, uh, I made a commitment. I'm like, all right, well, I'm not doing no shave November because we all saw what that looked like last year. And nobody needs to go through looking at me <laughs> like that again. Uh, that was scary. Uh, so I, I did something different I'm like, all right, well, I'm not going to miss any, uh, you know, I'm committing myself to doing at least five miles a day, uh, making sure the fitness is right and stuff. And then, um, you know, and taking a different approach. And I think it's important for anybody that's out there. Like if you, if things are on the horizon and you're working towards something, uh, whether it's cast working towards, uh, you know, getting into the PWBA or, or, uh, one of the, the, the kids that she's coaching, you know, they all have to be goal oriented and have something to look forward to, to kind of push us in our own way to, to work towards a, a, a goal. And, uh, you know, and if something, if it's a roadblock, you just, you, you alter it and you, you move forward again. Um, I hit a roadblock. I'm at home. I'm stuck at home. Cause I actually have the Ronies. Um, yeah. unfortunately, you know, it, it's, it sucks, you know, um, it, it got passed around. Carrie got it. I'm completely asymptomatic, but I'm stuck in my house the December 3rd. So you all are going to have to put up with me on here. Uh, probably doing a lot of talking because I can't sit still, but, uh, I'm doing my part. But again, um, it's a road, you know, it's a roadblock, but we, we go back. And we'll, we'll get right back on the wagon after it happens. But um, the good thing that you're saying there too, Cass, you touched upon a little bit of uh, bowling balls and arsenals and, and, and fit changes and, and, and things like that. Now, is that something that you, you know, are very cognizant of when you're working with, let's say your players, and maybe I'll ad lib into the question that came through by your wonderful husband um, who asked the question, which was, what do you, you know, what do you like better bowling or coaching? And, you know, we'll say, well, ad lib that, you know, how do you incorporate, you know, those things that you've learned over the years to your students? Sure. So I, like I said earlier, I've been blessed to have some of the best coaches, I think, in the country uh, coach me and look at my game. And I've been able to take a lot of what they've 
um, they've taught me into my coaching. So the very first thing, any player you get, you obviously you evaluate them, you, you look at how they're throwing the ball, but almost immediately you can generally see when someone has some kind of fit issue. And then once you get the fit issue fixed, then you can really start working on, on the physical game with them. I am a firm believer that I want to try to uh, make you the best bowler you can within the parameters that you have uh, versus entirely changing your whole game. Because I've been coached by coaches that want to completely change someone's game too. And we have so much technology out there today that I can just make you the best bowler you want to be. If you want to be a collegiate bowler, if you want to be a PBA bowler, PWBA bowler, I can get you there. You got to put the time in on the lanes, right? Uh, that is the the only the only difference. I've had players who won't put the time in, and the only time that they practice is when they come and get coached by me. And I actually talk to their parents generally and say, if if you can't get them out and practice in between sessions, this is really not going to be very beneficial for you. Um, from from a financial perspective, from your kid's progression perspective. Um, so, you know, having those frank, open, honest conversations, but absolutely the very first thing you look at is someone's fit. And mm -hmm. then you understand what their goals are and where they see themselves, you know, in the next month, in the next six months. So really mapping out a plan for them because a lot of players that come to coaches, I think, think that it will happen right away, right? I, and I think we've all heard the phrase, um, you know, you have to get worse before you get better. There is some truth to that because if you feel like you're in a session with me or I'm sure you, Jeff, uh, and a player is like, I don't feel anything different. It's the same. Well, then we're not doing something different, which means change can't happen Correct. if we're, we're not feeling something different. And it's all about feel. I'm very into how do you feel when you bowl. Um, so I, I think all of those things, being realistic with what the timelines are, is, is really important. And then setting the um, expectations that practice does have to occur for you to get better. Absolutely. So, coach, so they're flaring it right back at you. So they're going to make you eat your own words here. So, okay. you know, Paul kind of asking the same thing. So what part of your game will you be spending the most time focusing on when you get back into the bowling shape? Um, and I think what he really means by that is, okay, if you're to lay out a goal for Cass, okay, yeah. what is your, what is your goal right now? Yeah, so it's interesting. So when I when I first started coming up into bowling, I had uh, Jeff Dreyfus, a, a good coach of mine, now a, a really good friend that we've been, gosh, friends for I don't even know ten or fifteen years at this point. Uh, he always told me that once you get to a certain physical level the game then turns into a mental game, which, you know, we all know that. So when you're first starting out, right, it's more 80% physical, 20% mental. And then as you get better, it starts that that ratio starts to flip where it's more 80% mental, 20%. I would say I'm probably 50-50 right now. I, I think that I, I still have uh, some things to work on in my physical game. So that's where I'm going to start. I am a student of the game. So I love learning about all kinds of mental game and not just mental game and bowling, right? Like golf has a mental game. Tennis has a mental game. Everything you do has a mental game. Poker, ironically, has a mental game. Um, so it, it's probably 50-50. So I need to get to, to a better physical level personally. So it'll be a lot of time on the lanes, a lot of times working with my coaches to make sure that that I can repeat shots because right now it's not uh, not repeatable. And then we get into making sure I have the right arsenal, Jeff. That's where you come in, making sure that I, I had the right arsenal. And then, you know, it's all about making sure I stay sharp mentally. Absolutely. Um, and before I take some other questions here, there's a, a bunch of comments that have been coming through. So I want to make sure people don't think we're ignoring them. So uh, <laughs> Jody Boyd had stopped in saying hello. Oh, Hope hey, you're doing Jody. Well, Jody. Hope you're doing well, my man. Uh, I think Jim Weber was stopped in saying hi. Alyssa, yes, that is a home bowling center. Um, it is not Cass's. Um, I wish it was. Um, you know, I picked on her earlier about there. It is not It is not hers, but uh, she does have full use of that while she's in Indiana. So uh, uh, pretty crazy there. I just want to make sure that we don't miss anybody on the feed here. But um, definitely some good questions that, uh, you know, came through. Um, but, you know, outside of that, you know, you, you guys could keep feeding them in here. But, you know, 
Cass, what are what are some other things about you know that maybe I haven't even asked you at this point that come to your mind about uh, you know bowling in general or things that uh, you wanted to talk about or maybe something I didn't ask you. Um. So I love. So I love the people that I've met over the years. And the differences in personality are amazing. So as you've probably heard, I've moved quite a few times in my life. I'm averaging every two to three years. Mm-hmm. I'm moving to a new city. And the bowling community has allowed me to be in any city and still feel like I have a home. So I remember the first time I moved, I graduated college, I moved to Columbus, Ohio. I just was calling up bowling centers. I said, hey, do you have a women's league? They said, yeah, we actually have a spot for you. And I was standing at the counter waiting for this team to get in. I had never met any of these people. And the the secretary of the league came up to me and said, "Uh, I'm sorry, they filled the team. We don't have a spot for you. So I look like a lost puppy dog standing at the counter. I'm sure that's what I looked like. And uh, this lady came by and said, oh, we need a sub tonight. And I said, oh, I'll, I'll sub. I mean, I'm here. I'll sub. I ended up shooting 750 and they split one of the spots on their team and asked me to come in permanently. Permanently. <laughs> and, and so I started bowling in Columbus and learning all, all of the, uh, the people in Columbus, Ohio. And it really is the same story everywhere that uh, everywhere I've been. The Toledo bowling community is amazing. Indianapolis, I already had some built in friends there. But then moving to Maryland, uh, what, actually, Maryland was the most challenging bowling community to kind of tap into. I OK, so I'll tell you a personal story. So I'm in Baltimore and I want to bowl and I go into this bowling center and I got sticker shock because <laughs> they said bowling was six fifty a game. I said, I'm sorry, how much I hadn't paid for bowling in, I don't know, a very long time. So I said, OK, well, I'm not bowling at this center. I'll go try to find another center that is cheap. So I went to this other center and I was walking in with my two bags. And it was duck pin bowling. <laughs> I guess at duck lanes means duck pin. I had no idea duck pin was so popular in Baltimore. And I was so upset because I didn't, um, I couldn't find a place to bowl. All I wanted to do is bowl. I kept finding all these duck pin centers. I said, ah, screw it. I got Chipotle and went home for the night. <laughs> and just depressed that I couldn't find any centers to bowl in. So I was uh, lucky enough, uh, our neighbor upstairs was a secretary of a league and and my husband was walking into the apartment that we lived in and the guy said, oh, you're a bowler. He said, yeah, we just moved here. Do you want to sub on on this league? So we got involved in this league. That's where we met Matt Pine and then bowled in a singles um, PBA sports shot league and continued that relationship with Matt. Matt ended up we ended up making a team on Wednesday nights and we were sitting there one night bowling league and he said hey he said you guys really should apply for this this company called Pure and he had been talking to us about it but then you open up the applications and we we're like okay well we'll see and and that's really once we joined the team and we've met all these amazing people we're now just not Baltimore or Maryland bowlers right we've met so many mm-hmm. people in Pennsylvania which is amazing people in Virginia so that's kind of where any place I've ever gone, the bowling community and the people in the bowling community kind of keep you connected to that that place that always feels like home, which for me is on the lanes. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's funny you say that, you know, for, for anybody out there that doesn't realize, Baltimore is basically the home of duck pins. I mean, machines being made in Baltimore. I mean, they're still very prevalent in the area. Um, I don't know if you, you ventured out and did duck pin bowling, but that is hard. Um, you know, a traditional 10 pin bowler going out and bowling ducks for the first time. Um, I think it was, we, we were at Glen Burnie. So we went down the street to like Glen Burnie bowl the first time I was there and it was Kerry and John Fury and Pelusic and none of us had ever bowled ducks before. And, uh, you know, I think the high game was John at like one sixteen, and the guy, you know, the guy was like, that's pretty good. You know, the rest of us are throwing like 64, <laughs> and uh, it was pretty cool because he, he took us down back and showed us how the machines worked and showed us the different balls. And it was interested, you know, that 
you know, to show us the differences between the two. So it was pretty, pretty awesome to see that. But uh, if you're in Baltimore, you got to check it out. Uh, candlestick is hard too. I don't know if you ever bowl candles or, um, you know, up in the New England area, but uh, that's another challenge as well. Yeah, abs absolutely. Those are hard sports. Yeah. The, the three shots of frame and the wood isn't cleared. It's just really, you know, it's like night and day. Um, I, I did, uh, my ears kind of perked up because you said, you know, the Virginia bowling family and it, we're here about Cass, but your husband won in uh, Virginia yesterday, correct? That is correct. Yes. He, uh, I always know, uh, I better not give away his secrets, but I always know when he's bowling bad or good because I don't get a barrage of messages when he's bowling good. It's when mm. he's bowling bad that I, I get the barrage of messages. So I had a feeling he was probably doing pretty well. And yeah, I think he said that he had to strike out in the 10th frame of the seventh game to to take the lead. And, and he did. So he won by 10 sticks. So super proud of him for that. Yeah, pretty awesome. I mean, I bust this chops just like the rest of uh, the lefties in our little bit, our, our little family here. But uh, yeah, that purple hammer came in uh, handy for him. But <laughs> he's still going to be a lefty sewer rat just as long, you know, Matt the same way. So that's just my personality, like joking around with people. So uh, if I'm making funny out there, gang, and you're listening to our feeds and we're chuckling around, it means I get along with you. You know, if I'm quiet towards you, <laughs> there's probably a reason. <laughs> just be honest. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's pretty awesome. And I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad both of you, you know, had the opportunity to, to get to work with you guys so far already. And, uh, you know, you guys are part of our, our small little family here. Uh, we don't have a, a big team by any means, but, uh, adding some, you know, quality, uh, character individuals on the team is always what I'm looking for. And, uh, um, you know, it's pretty awesome that, here we are. You're in Indiana. I'm sitting here on my couch and uh, we're talking bowling. I mean, it's pretty crazy, right? I would have never dreamed of this when I was a child, um, having this type of technology and, and being able to just, you know, talk about a sport we love so much and having people tune in for wherever they want to. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I have to put in this other plug. So the first time that I actually went down to Pirit, <clears throat> there was this guy standing there. You might know him as uh, what do you call him? What do you call him? The gentle giants. Yes. <laughs> so Jason Jeffries was standing down there and I was like, how do we come 700 miles? He's from my hometown. Yeah. So how do we come 700 miles and we end up in the same bowling center on the same team? So it's been it's been nice to, to reconnect with him as well it's a small world i think you've said a yeah. few times bullying it is, it, a is small a, it is definitely a small world and you know jason's another uh, instance of a you know a quality individual um got to know him very well myself glad he's part of the team uh heck recently here we've uh, partnered up started shooting a bunch of videos and stuff so hopefully everybody's uh enjoying those as well you know we post them on our our uh, broadcast here but check out jaybird bowling as well you know remember you know yeah we're pure at bowling here but you, we're about bowling in general so uh you know, I have no issues. We got people from other shops and stuff that come on here. It's just, again, this is to promote bowling. This is to, you know, to promote the sport that every single one of us love, you know, just so much. And, um, you know, it's fun to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I know before the show, we were talking about different sayings that we've picked mm. up along the way. And, um, you know, I some of them are okay. Some of them, some of them are not okay. So I guess, let me ask some questions for you if you don't mind. And, and you have a few minutes. So sure. what, what are some of the phrases that you've picked up over the years that you've really felt that uh, have stayed in your bag? So when you see a certain pen leave, like a coupon or something like that, That's, that you, you think about, <laughs> I, I don't know what a coupon is. So you're going to explain that one first. I, oh, you don't, I, so I actually if, don't. Oh, you don't know. No. So it's the two, four, five. Okay. So it's the bucket if it has the nine. Okay. But if it's not, then it's a coupon because you cut it out. <laughs> there you go. There's bowling <laughs> slang. And, you know, we did talk about it a little at, at the beginning because, you know, myself and Carrie, you know, with and with tour and stuff, we've gotten to travel all over the United States. So we hear all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, you know, but I, I, have not heard that one before. So that's a new one for me. Um, but it's amazing. Like even in our own area, um, you know, when youth comes up, then you start hearing even more phrases you've never heard. Like, and it's not a bowling phrase, but like one of the younger kids on our staff the other day was joking around about working out. He's like, yeah, I'm going to come in here all swole. I'm like, what the hell does swole mean? Like swole, swole. 
Am I saying it right? Ah. Hey, young people out there on the feed, am I saying this right? Swole. Swole. Maybe one of the uh, maybe one of the brothers, Jordan or uh, Kyle, can jump on and, and tell me what that means. So, but yeah, it, you know, the slang like you know, from my area, being in Pennsylvania, we've heard a lot. Like Jersey, you'll hear things like mop um, is a big one. You'll hear people in this area refer to crossovers like Jersey or Brooklyn, and you know, you'll go out west and you'll use that, and then people are like, "What are you talking about? What does that mean?" Like it doesn't make any sense. Like I'm right-handed, and you you crossed over, and you said Brooklyn, and you're standing in California. I don't doesn't really make make a lot of sense. So it looks like my brother's on here, and he's saying yes. So uh, my brother's older than me, so evidently he's okay. more connected with his kids. Um, he has smaller children that can can back that up because otherwise, okay. there's no way he knew what that meant. Oh wait, here's <laughs> here's one of the Shell brothers. You're right. It means to have huge gains. Okay. All oh. right. So okay. I need to get I need to get all swole before I go bowl the masters <laughs> and have my I want huge gains in my average though, not my you know my physical physique. So I mean, but you're laughing. What are so much so you're saying coupon? Like what are other ones from your area? Like um, ones you grew Yeah, so so ones I grew up with, um, some of them I cannot say, but some of them, right? So the the Wall Street gang, giving them a shout out, uh, they we were talking through some some sayings and Ironically, you said you've heard this one before, and, and I had not heard it. So, a yam on it. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to yam on it. I would say the person I heard yams from the most, uh, man, Kenny Ryan, they would always, and uh, Bradley Krause, which I'm surprised Mouse isn't in here, uh, you know, kind of trolling this. He likes to, to come in here from Vegas and pop his head in, but they would talk about, you know, yamming on it or, you know, I've heard that one or, you know, he's got the berries, you know, that's another one. And now you see shirts with that on. I mean, it's, I, I think it's neat. I mean, it's, it's cool. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, um, ship to shore. Ship to shore. Okay. I kind of, I can follow along that one. Right. I, I mean, I understood it within context clues, but I, yeah. I just never said it. Um, and then we have uh, give it the business. Spin to win. That's a fun one. We probably all heard that one. Well, I had um, one from Mark uh, Mark Walters. I like to call him Pray and Spray, <laughs> or Spray, spray and, and Spray. Pray. No, Spray and Pray. Spray that's and kind pray. of his bowl. That's his bowling game, Pray and Spray. Um, but uh, I, we need to get him a shirt like that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some other ones as well. Got to give it the sauce. I didn't actually write that. So somebody else uh, wrote that and came up as pure bowling, but I, I don't know which one that is. Was that you, okay. Carrie? I don't know. Somebody's hacked my account. Got to give it the sauce. <laughs> uh, oh, might have been Jeffrey. Yeah, Jeffrey's is probably in there giving it that the sauce. All um, right. How about how about petting a kitty? That's not that. Don't, don't take that one. Petting a kitty. I'm talking bowling here, folks. That's, sure. Everybody's eyebrow. Your eyebrows went up, and everybody in the feed, their comments, their eyebrows went up, even though I can't see them. Sure. I call uh, it strangling strangling the kitty on the bottom. Like I'm going to kill the cat on the bottom. And that's probably just me. It, do you, that's your phrase? It, it, well, when, if I'm being timid, Carrie okay. will look right at me because sometimes I try to, I guess sometimes you try to play smarter than just naturally throwing it your own way. And she's just like, go up there and kill the cat on the bottom. Meaning just, just get on it or yam on it. There you go. Yam on it. All yeah, right. Yam on it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm old. No, oh, that's uh, that's great. I think, um, you know, I, I think it's it's interesting, the vernacular that changes all throughout or the handshakes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've uh, experienced that. The first time I, I lived in Columbus, they had a double handshake. If Well, I don't know if we handshake anymore or uh, hand clap anymore because of COVID, but uh, they have a double clap that they do when they get a certain strike or a spare. Hmm. Okay. So. Well, my brother, you know, said the same thing here and, you know, he popped in and said, he goes, you know, even our, the name of, you know, our bowling company here, Pure Bowling, it kind of started as a uh, slang, if you will. Like, you know, when we were growing up, like if you really threw a good shot, like, man, I absolutely pured that. Um, yes. And it kind of spun off and it's like, Hey, what the hell? That's just called Pure Bowling. I mean, it's because you'd be surprised how often people ask me, it's like, what does pure it mean? And it's like, well, you know, it, you know, it goes back to our youth and stuff. And when you threw in really good, like I've thrown at least six, seven good shots in my life. So it makes sense. <laughs> uh, I've been able to say I pure dead at least that many times. Well, that, I mean, six or seven, you're, you're yeah, above the national average. Yeah, this is, this is good. I mean, this is huge news. Uh, I had, 
<laughs> it's been it's probably been about i don't know a year and a half since i really got one off my hand good but uh now it's it's fun it's all in it's all in fun but what what other ones do you have on oh, noodles there's one having the noodles it's similar to having the berries oh okay um is that is that any is that pennsylvania thing i'm pretty sure it's probably like an amish thing yeah uh, that's i was gonna but, say that's plus, where plus the farmers from. around here you know that's what my buddy Pelusa calls uh, my area the 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 farmers of the world, the farmer bowlers. So, uh, eh. they made a movie about that. Yes, Kingpin, and it was filmed in Scranton. So, <laughs> right, it, it, that, it happens. Uh, high publicity there. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I, I guess a, a few more uh, getting it in the fescue. I guess this is the out of bounds. You don't want to play in the fescue. Yeah, that's also, play, that's like playing on a links course in golf. Yeah. yeah. And you know, golf and bowling are like the same sport. That's what I uh, subscribe to. Um, we could have that conversation. If you think about the greens and bowling and a lane and bowling, it's very, very similar. It's invisible topography and all of that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. There is. I'm very much a lot better at one of those sports than the other though. Your seven pure shots, right? That was in bowling, not golf. I've never peered a shot in golf yet. <laughs> you never peered a shot in golf. I don't think so. I mean, I made a putt or two, but I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I hit it okay, but I, I don't think you can call that pure. Um, you know, I joked around. You know, we talk about golf, and I love. I'm sarcastic, so I was joking with the guys. Uh, we we played a golf event, and I from some guys down your areas, uh, Nick Rines, uh, James Francovich, and uh, myself and Brandon Hinder played a, a tournament. You know, a little chilly, whatever. It was, like a month and a half ago. And uh, I joked around with the guys because I had gotten some new clubs and I have a driver and I'm like, yeah, I got to, you know, I want to change the shaft on this driver, blah, blah, blah. And I said, but I might sell it. And I said, the cool thing is if I sell this, I can market it as the center of this club is brand new because I've never hit it. I always hit the <laughs> damn ball off. You know, I beat the shit out of the toe on the club, mm. um, but the center of the club is perfect. So I should just be able to sell it as, you know, like new um, and that, you know, I've, I've never had any damage or a ball has never touched the middle of that club ever. <laughs> yeah, Nick just tuned in and out of nowhere. Here's his name. Yes, Nick, we were we were talking about uh, golf at that point and uh, my inability to be able to hit the middle of the, the driver. <laughs> All right, what other ones you got under cast? Can you believe it or not? We've almost been talking 50 minutes already. Oh, really? Yes. No, I cannot believe it. I mean, I could talk for hours about this sport, but we didn't even yeah. really talk about for the fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So the one, the real big one in college, I think that uh, I don't even know if they still do it, but yeah, spare. It's like the most annoying slash like best thing that you want to hear from your team is that you made a spare because in college bowling, uh, uh, you know, spares do win championships, although mm -hmm. crossovers win championships too, right? If they all yep. fall, they all fall. Uh, so yeah, spare and um, sh so the shim hit the shim. That's a fun one. I uh, don't exactly know where it came from. It's an older term and a newer term kind of mixed together. So mm -hmm. shim, shim wrecker, things around us, you know, play the shim. Yeah. Um, you know, the one thing, you know, Cassie, you, you, you kind of you backed right into this. So I've been trying. OK, I've been trying with every collegiate female bowler I've had on my program. Do you remember your favorite chant? And if so, can you recite it right now? <laughs> yeah. I'm just oh waiting, my gosh, for, one, so I'm waiting many for one person to play along. Um, I mean, I, uh, so if my best friend was on this feed right now, she would say the, the gobble, gobble, turkey dance. I'm not going to do that. Why? Um, it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> I know, but there's a dance that goes with it. This is even better. <laughs> You're in I, a private bowling center. I know, I know. It's and um, I will make sure this gets to at least ten thousand people. So at I least mean, if 10, you want, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so literally um, every single strike. So Purdue. Uh, okay, so women's bowling. I don't know if you know this, but we actually had well, at least when I was coming up through the program, we had cheer sessions. And we would literally go over our cheers or chants, if you will, for um, our tournaments. So 
if um and it was all a mental game play <laughs> oh that's funny um is all a mental game play right like the loudest most obnoxious teams you would uh hear on the lanes and you do it for the specific reason that if someone is paying more attention to you and your chance and your cheers they're probably not paying attention to their game which is better for us right Right. So we had a, a chant for every single strike that you got. So if we were on a if we were on a string of strikes, every single chant or every single strike would have its own chant. OK, um, I can't recite all of them. I don't remember all of them. I just know that when you got three in a row, you got the gobble gobble turkey dance. And then I did some ridiculous dance in the pit to try to, like, get everybody like pumped up. And uh, I mean, you have a golden opportunity here right now to take that <laughs> legacy and maybe teach it to somebody that can, it may not be <laughs> Purdue, but there, there may be some youth players out there that could take this nostalgic, you know, <laughs> dance that you you're, you're just teasing us with here and use it in the future. And you could be a legacy Cass. I'm giving you a golden <laughs> opportunity here. You're at legacy lanes trying to instill victory. your legacy victory. Well, I'm sorry. Victory lane, same thing. It would be a victory if I get you to do it. I keep going with these pun on words if you want. I know, I know. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had any liquid courage today. Um, Isn't there a bar to your right? Oh, yeah, yeah, there is actually a bar to my right. <laughs> I could go get a drink. Um, so the gobble, gobble turkey dance, I can't believe I'm going to do this. This one's for my best friend, Lisa. I don't even know how far I have to go back. Like I even got the period on, right? Ah, so, that's good. You're you're gonna be famous. I can't believe. So in college bowling, you know, you've got to stay hype, and when you start stringing strikes, just like you do in person, it's a lot of fun. So uh, the gobble gobble turkey dance, you know, you get up and you'd be like, uh, gobble gobble turkey dance, gobble gobble turkey dance, gobble gobble turkey, gobble gobble turkey, gobble, gobble, turkey and a turkey dance. <laughs> oh, that just made my day. <laughs> That absolutely made my day. Oh my you have, god! I can't you believe I just did that. But. You have officially won the, <laughs> the the coolest you know staff one that I've done so far. Only because you dance, not because I I like somebody more than somebody else. But sure, sure. That was courage without alcohol, and just <laughs> letting everybody know this is what this game's about. Right? It's about it's about having fun. It's about coming together. It's you know, this is why we love this game. Right? That that's great. I I, I needed a good laugh. Um, God, I'm gonna find a way to have that. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna export it from this and do something with it. So, uh, oh my goodness. Oh yeah, you're getting uh, exported. It's happening. Yeah, but, but that, but that is, I mean, that's the chant from college. Like, I just know, like, my my best friend calls me sometimes, and she's like, "Can you just say the chant so I can like envision you doing the dance?" <laughs> so, well, see, you you were, you know, you had this list of things that you know people wanted you to try to incorporate during this. So I think no matter what they gave you, you just beat that. So it doesn't like there's there's nothing that can top that. That was perfect. I meow. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have to watch Super Troopers uh, now tonight. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't thirteen or fourteen of them, but uh, um, uh, amazing stuff. But uh. I, I, you know, that was, uh, has to go viral. My brother, uh, Brian, make sure you get that onto our website. Um, <laughs> oh, goodness. And, and make sure, you know, make sure you have her full name. Um, <laughs> I will give you her maiden name so people can draw it back, but no, everybody. And, uh, you know, that, that's awesome stuff. I love the, the fact of being a great sport there, Cass, and, you know, yeah. having a little fun with us tonight. Um, 55 minutes into the feed, you know, I, the, the, the comments are starting to slow down a little bit. Um, but you know, I, I want to make sure that I, you know, I personally thank you. I, I'm so glad that you've decided to, you know, come on board with us here and you're part of our family. And, uh, you know, I, I really do appreciate what you do, you know, from, a um, with your career and what you're doing in the, the, you know, the medical field and along those things and being still, you know, even though it's marketing, it's still in the front line. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to, uh, you know, get some of this behind us and, and get to work with you a little bit more on the lanes and, you know start, you know, getting you ready for what you want to do is the next chapter of your bowling career. But uh, um, I definitely had a ton of fun. Hopefully you did as well. Hopefully everybody that's watching, which everybody's been <laughs> laughing, hopefully, uh, you know, our little session here gives you, uh, you know, a little bit of break from the craziness going on in the world right now. Um, but uh, Cass, can't thank you enough uh, for joining us here. 
Um, if anybody has any questions for cast moving forward for myself, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. You know, we're, we're both available to answer any questions you may have. Um, any closing remarks for you, Cass? Yeah, you know, I mean, I just want to thank you and and the whole Pira team, you know, for the opportunity ever since I did join the team. I, I brought on a couple of, of players that I'm coaching right now. And it's it, I love to compete. And the only other thing that I love more than competing and winning myself is watching my players compete and win. And I'm so, um, you know, I'm so blessed to have a platform like this to be able to, you know, continue my bowling experience and learning and give as much knowledge as I can to everyone and, and gain as much knowledge, honestly, as I can from you and, and all of my team members. So I really appreciate having, um, uh, being on today and, you know, anything we should, we should do it again sometime. Absolutely. You know, it doesn't have to be, this is definitely not a once and done. Um, this isn't going to end after, you know, the pandemic's gone and stuff like that. No, we, we absolutely love doing this. We want to do some more fun things with the staff and, you know, things out there to, to return and, and help everybody that's watching our feeds out there. So, uh, you know, continue to uh, support Bowling Gang, you know, do it in a safe manner. Uh, support your local proprietors out there, pro shops, things along those lines. Reach out to a certified coach. And if uh, any means at all. Anything that we can do for you here, please reach out to us. We'll be happy to answer any questions for you. Um, on that note, I'm uh, I'm going to sign us off for the night cast. Thank you so much. I, I'm going to hit replay real quick and uh, watch that dance one more time. But uh, it's, <laughs> okay. it's I, I'm, I'm psyched. I, I'm so proud of you for actually doing that. So uh, anyway, um, thank you for your time tonight, gang. Uh, everybody out there, continue to be safe. And we'll uh, tune in tomorrow night as I will be talking about the Ebonite Allure Solid. And I'm going to have uh, one of the uh, brand managers or product specialists for the brands of Brunswick, uh, my friend, Mr. Adam Ishman, on with me tomorrow night. And uh, we'll be reviewing another ball. Till then, we will see everybody. Take care now. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome.